Well, I'm running out of logs. There's a young guy up the road from me that is glad to cut a few logs on his property. He and his dad, they own a good sized piece of land and when he needs a couple extra dollars, he calls me up and says, are you interested in buying logs? The answer is always yes. So it is uh, almost 7.30 in the morning. I don't want to start my processor or my mill because I want to make sure I am a good neighbor. <laughs> Um, I usually don't start till after 8 o'clock. That gives people a chance to get up and around. But anyway, this young guy dropped me off a, a like a one-ton dump truck load of logs the other day. And they're all random sizes, random lengths. But he trusts me enough that I will scale them. And I'll make sure that I give him as much as I can as I can afford to pay for them. Really good logs. I paid 47 cents a board foot. I've got a simple calculator. I'll show you a piece of paper that I've photocopied because I don't want to wear the original one out because it's old. It's a New Brunswick log scale and I'll be able to give him the best yield I can. I usually don't buy anything that's smaller than six inches at the small end. If it's a 12 foot log and it's six inches or less at the small end then I'll cut it to an eight foot and give him something for it for sure. I don't want to see him get you know go his efforts go for nothing but if it's a twisted crooked up top or something I usually just put it in my firewood pile and give it away to somebody that uh that needs woods <laughs> anyway. So what I'm gonna do is get my tape measure, get my log scale chart and a blue crayon. And I'll mark as I as I measure and, and size a tree or a log, I'll, I'll mark the actual board footage right on the end of it. And that way it gives me a, uh, well, for one, I won't, I'll know that I've already <laughs> counted that one in my schedule. I write in a notepad, count the amount of logs that are there, add it all up and then multiply it by 47 cents, give them a call and, and pay them. So let's get my scaling chart, my calculator, tape measure, and we'll get at this and get them scaled and uh, get this young man paid. So here are my tools of choice. I've got a notepad, which I've been writing bits and bits, bits and pieces on already. This notepad is, this goes everywhere in my truck with me, all of my firewood orders. Um, this one started in August. So all of the cords of wood that I deliver, all of my wood, firewood orders I record in this notebook um, a lot of it is not just for the for the wood but for the fuel I put in my truck the kilometers I put in my truck that truck is 100% business use and if Revenue Canada decides to audit me again as a matter of fact I'm going for my third Revenue Canada audit right now they uh, they have no reason to, to think that I'm using this truck for personal use um, they use it to haul my tractor, use it to haul my logs, they use it to deliver firewood, and they've disputed it a few times. I don't know what, what I can do about it. Anyway, so I have my log scale, New Brunswick log scale. I have a blue crayon, brand new one. I have a tape measure, and I just need to measure the diameter of the small end of the log and the length of the log, and then write, the, write that on the end of the log, and then I can go to my chart and find out how many board feet are in that roughly, and add it to my list. It's not a it's not a hard thing to do. It's just uh, a bit time consuming. So I'll do this before my neighbors wake up and then I'll be able to get to work in the wood yard. <clears throat> So there, I've got marked on the end of every log is this, the board footage that's in each one of those. And also when I mill these logs, I'm gonna look at that, this one right here is a good example. There's 48 board feet supposed to be in that log. And I'm gonna find out if I get 48 board feet. And it's usually pretty close actually. The scale's, uh, scale's all right. So I added all these up. There's 19 scalable logs in this pile. And there's two that don't make a scale because they're way too small, but I gave them a couple of bucks for each of those. and rounded it up so this pile of logs right here he will net or he will I guess grow some my end of it but I will have to pay him $280 is what I'm gonna pay for these logs and uh, depending on what people want milled out of these I just put these in my inventory I'll take my tractor and I'll stock them I'll move over here and I'll show you I keep my 12 to 16 foot long logs here and that's 16 foot long logs that 
won't make an eight inch cant at the small end so I keep them separated and then in this pile over here are all my eight foot logs that would be just stud wood or one by six one by eight that kind of thing regardless of the diameter so I kind of have a system and uh, over there that ugly log actually came from the highway they did some tree thinning and this sort of was in my driveway so I I'll make something out of it I'll get some studs out of it and my longer bigger logs will go in this pile got to get rid of this old red Audi anybody that wants a good parts car let me know um, yeah so that's all there is to that that's as easy as it is I just add up all those uh, 19 numbers and uh, multiply it by 0.47 and that's that's how much logs are worth today uh, I'd pay a little less if I had to go pick them up myself I'd pay a little more if they were all premium logs without a sweep in it. For instance, this log right here, I've got it 30 board feet. Even though it's a 16 foot log, you can see the big sweep at the end of it. I'm going to have to cut that off at 12 feet. So the, the last four feet of that is kind of useless to, to me. So I, I just scale that as a 12 foot log. Um, if there's any balsam fir in there too, I cut that price in half because there's all kinds of tension and spring. Um, I just call it memory that's in those logs. So anyway, let's uh, let's get these moved into place and I'll give him a text and tell him that there will be money in an envelope here. For
Isn't that the greatest little tractor? It's way stronger than uh, it looks, that's for sure. It'll lift, I've lifted 1,200 pounds with it. I've lifted a third of a cord of green hardwood with the forks, should never have, but I did anyway. Just to move a, a bag, one of those uh, bulk bags. One of these fellows. I fill those up with, uh, well right now I'm filling with softwood, but when they're hardwood, they're heavy. And this little tractor right here with the forks on will lift it. I wouldn't do it without the backhoe on because I need that extra ballast. And my wheels are loaded and I have two inch spacers in there as well to uh, help with the stability. This tractor has close to 800 hours on it now. It's a 2018, I bought it new and it earns its keep every single time I turn that key. There's not a day goes by that this tractor's not out in the yard doing something from, it could be mowing or moving logs or firewood or loading my firewood processor, loading the mill, moving slab wood, plowing snow, moving lumber, loading trucks, moving these firewood bags, putting the hitch on to move the uh, my splitter around or the processor, so. So anyway, all this to say, it's easy to get logs. If you have a sawmill, I know people have asked me, where do you get logs? One thing, I have a wood lot. So if I have a specific order, a specific species, I'll take my chainsaw and my tractor or my ATV and my little forestry trailer, and I'll go and I'll pick, you know, the dozen logs or 20 logs or whatever I need to make that specific order, specific species or specific length that I don't have here. Um, I pay well for logs that show up. I pay more than any mill would around here. 47 cents is a lot. Typically, it's around 30 delivered to a mill, maybe a little less, 27 cents. Um, spruce is usually by the ton. The, the um, It's sold right now for biomass, for, for fuel. It's a terrible system. I think it's a, uh, I think it's a horrible way to uh, to use these marketable logs. But anyway, that's that's neither here nor there. I'm not trying to get a, into a political conversation about it. I'm just telling you that I have a problem getting logs. So I have three or four people that cut logs, and if I need a load of logs, I can call them and say I need... 500 board feet of spruce or whatever it is I need, pay right away, scale them honestly, and uh, it'll be no problem. The next guy, next time he needs, you need logs or he needs some money, you answer the phone and it'll work um, out in your favor almost every time. As a sawyer, you have to have connections for logs. As a firewood processor, uh, you have to have connections for firewood. Pay your bills, pay fair, pay on time. Um, and don't complain. If you've got a, a quality issue and it's just a once in a, in a blue moon kind of a deal, just live with it. Turn the log. It's you're, it's not going to be the end of the world if you have a couple of crooked firewood logs. You can complain about it if you like. I mean, I, I, I make a video out of it and I try to make um, even make light of it. But sometimes I put those logs aside and I'll process them with my chainsaw. But to me, I want to be treated or I want to treat my suppliers the way I'd want to be treated. I want them to be treated fair. I want to be treated fair. When I deliver a load of firewood to somebody, I expect to be paid really when I deliver the firewood. I open my email when I get home that e-transfer should be there by the time I get home. I don't get wound up if it's a day or something that doesn't bother me at all, but if it's weeks next time that you need firewood, I might be busy. I'm having trouble as well lately with people that have lost customers because there are some underhanded uh i don't even know how to word the under the table firewood business sawmill business that don't charge tax i run a legitimate business and uh, the next time somebody asks me how much will it be cash and i know exactly what they mean they want the back the tax out of it i'm just going to give the auditor right now their name and number and they can get audited because if they're willing to rip off the government, they're willing to rip off other people. And there's a good chance that if the, the supplier that's bringing them wood is willing to rip off the government, they're probably willing to rip that customer off as uh, with regard to the amount of wood they get. So we need to pay Caesar what is due Caesar. And we pay God what's due God. And that's pretty much the way I like to try to run my business. Um, I seem to get audited more than most people though, in my opinion, but anyway. That which doesn't kill you make you stronger. Thanks for watching. This video is over now. I don't have anything more to say about scaling logs. It's an easy day for scaling logs. I've made a couple other videos. I've done this a lot. Um, and I want to make sure that my that my suppliers, my woodcutters, get, get a, a fair day's pay. This is a, a morning's worth of work for somebody in the woods. He made 280 bucks uh, for really a morning's worth of work. Mind you, he has to have a, a tractor and he has to have a truck you know to deliver this uh, stuff but i'd go get it if i needed to so anyway 
have a wonderful weekend. It's Friday. I don't know if I'm going to do any more videos this weekend, but uh, I appreciate you watching. Over and out, everybody.